Hey there, Slayers, and welcome back to this channel. Have you ever been feeling like you are being gaslit by a narcissist, but you're just not quite sure if it's gaslighting? I bet you didn't know that this one common phrase is gaslighting every single time. I'm gonna go over that in this video. Hi, I'm Rebecca Zung, and I am a narcissist negotiation expert. I'm also an attorney. I've been recognized by U.S. News as one of the best lawyers in America. I'm also an author of the best-selling book, Slay the Bully, How to Negotiate with a Narcissist and Win. And if you are new here, I invite you to subscribe to this channel and hit that notification bell. We release brand new videos every single day. And if you are coming back, Welcome, welcome back to this channel. We are here creating a community of slayers who are rising up against narcissists and breaking free from toxic relationships, whether they are professional or personal. Today, we are tackling a phrase that I bet you didn't know is gaslighting. It seems like a common phrase and sometimes it seems pretty innocuous. It's one of those phrases that kind of sneaks up on you. I know even for me, sometimes you think, hmm, that didn't feel very good. And you don't even sometimes realize what's happening when you're being gaslit. And that's why we're here educating you every single day on this. So what is gaslighting? Gaslighting is when the narcissist is trying to destabilize you. It's, they're trying to make you doubt your own reality by manipulating you. It's a tactic to manipulate you, sometimes unintentionally, I guess, if, they, if just manipulation is just a way of life for them, saying things or doing things or acting in ways to contradict your senses, your reality, and doing things that you know to be true. They do all sorts of different things. They can straight out lie. That didn't happen. What you believe is true is not true. But a lot of times it sneaks up on you. A lot of times it's much more stealth than that. A lot of times it's much more covert than that. In this particular instance, there is a phrase that seems sometimes innocuous, but it is not. And that is, the phrase is, you're misunderstanding me. What I'm trying to say to you is, you're misunderstanding me. And a lot of times, you're not misunderstanding at all. Maybe you are confused sometimes, but a lot of times, you're not confused at all. But they try to make it seem like you're confused. You're negotiating a particular contract, and they're sharing their side of what they want, what their particular side is of the facts. And you're sharing what your particular side is of the facts and how they want it to go. You might be talking about a trend in what's happening in social media or something like that. And they're trying to explain to you what the current trends are. You know, you've done your research and they're doing their research. They'll say, you know, you're exaggerating or something. And then they start to say, no, here is the data. Here's the data of what it is and trying to get you to question your understanding. And, and sometimes if it's somebody who's a man to a woman, they try to make it seem like it's paternalistic. They try to couch it in terms of care. Or if it's somebody who's doing something unethical and you're you're catching them on doing something unethical, they try to weasel out of it by saying, oh, you're misunderstanding what I'm saying, what I'm doing. I, I, I certainly wasn't doing anything unethical. And they try to dismiss your feelings and what you're saying by getting you to think that what you're seeing, what you're believing, what you know to be happening isn't happening because you're just misunderstanding what's going on. And it's a tool to dismiss you, dismiss your sight, dismiss your vision, dismiss your hearing, mute your voice and get you to be manipulated. And if you guys have seen this, I want you to put, I've seen it in the comments below, just put, I've seen it. And it can be extremely unsettling because a lot of times you end up feeling like, okay, maybe I did misunderstand. Maybe I did mishear it. And you end up being persuaded because a lot of times 
if they say it with such confidence and such power and and they, they can be extremely persuasive in their delivery and you think oh, well i don't know maybe maybe i did misunderstand them maybe i i did jump to conclusions or something you know that feeling in your gut that never quite goes away. And this isn't a professional situation or a personal situation. So it, it does always sort of stick in your mind as to whether or not you actually did exaggerate or you did misunderstand or you didn't quite see that the right way or the wrong way. It does always sort of make you doubt whether or not you believe that person. As human beings, we kind of want to see the good in people and, and we always try to look to see if maybe there was something else that made up for it or there was something else that we weren't seeing. And there's a lot of other good things about that person. And so we end up moving on. And a lot of times we just dismiss it and we we leave it to one side and we, we go on with that person in relationship, whether it's professional or personal, because we want to, because we want, we want to continue to be in relationship with that person for whatever reason. This is a common phrase that is gaslighting. If you are dealing with a narcissist and it's eating you alive inside and you're feeling like you need extra support, make sure you join my free private Facebook group, Narcissist Negotiators with Rebecca Song. And if you want phrases for disarming narcissists, grab them. I have a whole list of phrases that you can use at disarmthenarc.com, disarmthenarc.com, phrases for disarming narcissists. Make sure you get those. And also, if you need additional support and you need access to therapy, I have a sponsor on this channel, which is BetterHelp, and you can get that access to help at betterhelp.com forward slash Rebecca Sung. It is a sponsor for us, which means we receive commissions on that. If you use it, it does not cost you any extra. We just want you to have access to help and support that you can trust. Remember that gaslighting is a manipulation tool. That's what it is. It's meant for that. And the purpose of videos like this is to help you get access to information, to knowledge, to know like, hey, Bet you didn't know that this phrase was gaslighting, right? And now you know. There's so many other tools out there for you. And that's, you know, what my SLAY program is all about, which is, you know, SLAY your negotiation with a narcissist, which has helped many thousands of people get access to a negotiation tool that helps you win free content like this here on YouTube. I have this in, in my podcast, in my book. Just remember that your feelings are valid. Your experiences are real. Be cautious of phrases and responses that belittle you, invalidate you, and invalidate those around you and ensure that your words empower you rather than de diminish, right? Don't allow anybody to diminish you, diminish your light. So if this video was eye-opening for you and you think others can benefit from being in the know, make sure you like it, make sure you share it out. And if you haven't subscribed to this channel yet, make sure you do that now. Subscribe, hit that notification bell. Remember that knowledge is our most potent tool and sharing can definitely make a significant impact. This community and communities like this thrive with your support and together we spark change. So the next video that I want you to watch is 21 gaslighting phrases and 10 gaslighting techniques that narcissists use. So that is definitely going to help you tremendously. So that's the next video to watch. I will see you there. Remember that today's a great day to start negotiating your best life. I'm Rebecca Zong. I will see you in that next video. Remember, keep shining. Keep shining that beautiful, powerful light of yours and always stand in your truth. Take care.